Hey guys, welcome back. This is Diary of a Wimpy Kid tier list ranking. So this goes from top tier, which is the S tier, and then we make our way down. So this I'm gonna be starting off with the worst books and going from the worst to the best. Um and yeah, so last video I did I uh, last tier list I did it kind of short. This will be more of a longer one so I can tell you why I think that is what it is so moving on with the first one as I'm going to be putting these at the worst ones you get the point here now there's many reasons to why I think um, this one right here diary of what became awesome for, whoa wait 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 yeah, wait. Yeah. So, Diary of Wimpy Kid's Spooky Stories. Diary of a Diary of an Awesome Friendly Spook. Diary of an Wait, what is it? Ra oh yeah, Riley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Spooky Stories. Now, I haven't read this for a while, but the thing is, I couldn't even finish reading it. That's how bad that this book sucked. I they would have found this unlikable in many, many, and many, and I mean many ways. In this book, the plot is just all weird and stuff. Like, I don't even know if there even is a plot in this book. That's how bad it is. This book, to me, was one of the most stupidest books that anyone could ever make. And for someone like him, he doesn't really make dumb books. He makes Diary of Kid, which are not dumb. Some are, some aren't. But this Raleigh Jefferson one, I mean, he could have done a lot better than this. I'm just putting it out there. He could have done a way better job of putting all the stories together, making them more interesting, making the characters seem more real and unannoying. But in this terms, annoying is not the only word I have to say for this book. There's so many other things I have to say. One, this book has no potential in it. Second, this book has legit ruined all the hype I had for it. And third, the plot is all messed up. I don't even, I told you guys, I don't even know there's a plot. Because there's so many stories to it. They're so stupid. I don't even know if he was trying to make this on purpose. Or if it just came out like, came out the wrong end on accident. Because for me, this book just did not cut it for me. I literally think that, I think even math is better than this book. I'd rather spend nine hours in math class than read this stupid book. For real. Moving on with the next one, it's Diary of a Whippy Kid, um, Diary of an Awesome Friendly, wait, Riley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventures, see I keep thinking there's like Friendly Kid or something, that's the first one, which I haven't read yet, let's hope that's better than those two, If the next, and then I heard that there's another one coming out, but I don't know if that's true, I'm not going to spin a rumor around, but that's true. Then <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna want to read them. <laughs> now, Diary of an Awesome, no, Riley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventures. Um, this book was one of the worst ones I've ever read. Also, now the reason is this book legit was trash. I had big, sorry, I had exped, I had very big, high expectate exped. Expedition, expeditions, or expectation, expectations for this book. So I can't pronounce that word right. I had high of those. Okay, I had high expectations, and it crushed them all. First, I've, I've read most of all of this, and then I just quit reading. Because there's no point in reading books you don't like. Now, in this one, the worst feeling you've ever had is going to be in this book, and these other, in the other one. This one has one of the worst stories to them. The worst stories, the worst plot, and yes, a big upgrade because yet this book kind of has a plot. This book stays in that plot. But on the other hand, the other one, I don't even know that has a plot because some of the stories, I mean, yeah, it's just like Rowley, uh, awesome, Rowley Jefferson's awesome spooky stories. It's just like that. But yet, this one seems to be a little bit better, but yet it's so trash anyways. The book kind of fits in with this guy named the White Warlock or Wizard or some type of like a warlock that kidnapped his mom. His dad is away, and so 
in the book, he basically is going to go do things and try to save his mom. He meets Bur Blarg or Burger. It wasn't, it's Garg. I think it's Garg, which is Greg, but more buffed version. Which I, you know, to be honest, I found that the only good part about this book was that the design of Bar Blarg, or is it Barg? Wait. Greg. Is it Garg? Yeah, I think it's Garg. And he made Garg, aka buffed Greg, look amazingly well. But yet, the character that's after him. First, the main characters of Rowley and Greg are two entirely different characters. From this book and from the Dollar of Whippy Kid series, these two are literally utterly crap. The designs of them are terrible. Everything about this book was absolutely horrific. Just terrible. Okay? I bet you this movie should be, this book should be a horror movie because sure it would scare everyone because it would be saying it would be like saying to everybody how in the world could someone make such a bad book I don't know but it's true that these two can be the worst I bet you these two can be in the museum of worst books ever I'm spinning a true fact out there that's what she said <laughs> now the one thing I liked about is the is the design the other thing is nothing else except the toys that they were making were kind of cool in the book for that but here's the thing greg is mean to is mean to rowley in this book literally the character designs are off he greg is now a sociopath in this book which we never seen diary of a wimpy kid so therefore it kind of changed my ways of the entire series now of this series, of course, not the other ones, but it, it, it was so trash. I hate this, this book. All of my passion that I hate this book. I don't know why they thought that this was a good idea to create a book like this, but they, I guess they did. I don't know how, but they did. Now, moving on with the next one, which is Diary of a Whippy Kid. Now we're moving on to the Diary of Whippy Kid books. We're putting that in disappointing. Now, why exactly we're putting this book in disappointing is because of the basically the theme of it. Now, there were some good parts in here where Greg is having hard trouble getting his friend back after getting a girlfriend or some girl to like him. But the whole fact of having an eight ball as a theme throughout this entire book made the book highly unlikable. And yet, it kind of still made me like it better than these other two on this list so far. Legit, I mean, I would read this book again. I mean, it ain't as bad as what I thought it was. But as time went on, it really wasn't good. I'm just spinning a true fact out there. This book had good potential. And yet, it kind of did a little bit good of it. But yet, it's more bad than good. So, therefore, it's disappointing. I don't really know much, know mo much more to say about it than that. So, we're just going to continue. Diary of a Whippy Kid. Um, Diary of a Whippy Kid. There's so many books I've read. I don't know. All right. Here we go. Diary of a Whippy Kid. The Meltdown. Now this would go in fun, but I'm putting the higher books up there. This isn't even decent enough. It's better than that, but just keep it there. Now, Diary of a Kid, The Meltdown was utterly one of the best books I've ever read in the series so far. The theme of having it again, like Cabin Fever, it, it kind of fit in with the snow theme, being locked in and stuff. Absolutely crushed my expedition, expedition, expeditions, or expedition, 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 something like that. It, it crushed it for me, because it, yet, it's a snowball theme. So it basically has snowball war fights in there and much more. And it just, it, it, it brings out the joy. Even though mostly these come out in October. Some books are Christmas themed, some are not. This book did really, really well. Did absolutely well. I love this book. A lot of people don't like it. I don't know why that is, but they do. It's a really, really great book with a really, really good plot. And the characters, again, they're always likable, but and these are... I feel like it's more of a joyful book than the, than the other ones because it's snowball theme and it, it's the best time of the year where you love everyone and you kiss someone under the mistletoe. It's just such a great book. I mean, it really, really is. Diary of a Kid, The Deep End. Now, I don't know if I said I like this more, but I don't. 
Don't even look at the deep end. It's still decent enough to be on decent enough. Okay, because it's a really, really great book. It's another summer theme, which I feel like half the books are mainly summer theme. We have Dog Days. We have, the, I think it's, is it The Getaway? I don't know, but. Don't ever look at the deep end. It's downright one of the best books I've ever read again. Again, I'm saying this. They're, they're really impressive. I'm going to say they're the best. They could have been better, these two, but Don't ever look at the deep end was really, really good. And uh, it was absolutely amazing because of how good the book was. It's utterly one of the best because it's so it's one of the most unique type summer books we've gotten. There's so many more of these we've gotten that are summer themed, but this one is a little bit better than those. Feels like they have a pretty decent enough, you know, plot to be good, you know. Moving on with the next one. Diary of a Whippy Kid. Cabin Fever. Wait, no. Because these are like the top tier, so. Diary of a Whippy Kid. No. Diary of a Wimpy Kid Double Down. Now, Diary of a Wimpy Kid the Double Down is the... Whoa, wait. I forgot about that, sorry. Not this. Here we go. There we go, put you up there. This one is really great. Because in Diary of a Wimpy Kid Old School, he goes old school, okay? He goes utterly old school. There's no machines in here. He struggles with it. And... He ends up going to a camp. All right. Now, this was the most unique book I've ever seen of Diary of a Whippy Kid until Book Sixteen came out, and we'll get to that. Diary of a Whippy Kid, Diary of a Whippy Kid, Old School. He went to a camp. As no machines, he has to do something with his summer, right? So he decides to go to a camp, and there's this legend of a guy named Silas Scratch, which I did a video explaining why Silas Scratch won't be in the upcoming Diary of a Whippy Kid book. And that video was supposed to be on Laughing Moment, but I decided to post it on this YouTube channel as it has more subscribers and it's a more of a hit. Now, this book utterly was one of the best ones I've read. Many for reasons why Silas Scratch first made an appearance in this book. And it probably will be the only book we see it. And the characters are likable. We have like other camp members in the book, which we, we never really get to go with. Because, you know, it's mainly going to be with the mostly themed people. And then has Roderick and all these other people. And this book even told about Roderick being scared of that Silent Scratch. And it turns out it's just a little place where the people, where the people, where the, uh, the campground people or whatever they're called. The people that own it. I mean, I think it's his, Greg's dad or someone. And he was just pulling a prank so then he can have his own s private bathroom. Was just the dumbest thing, but yet it's so funny because I believe that freaking the dad would do that. Crap, I forget them dad. Oh my gosh, I don't even pay attention, do I? I just call him Greg's dad. I mean, I don't really want to call him by his name. I know, I'm just too polite with that. But, uh, yeah. It's a really, really great book. Because it's just, how, how who would be so dumb enough to decide to do that? To go ahead and say, oh, I'm just going to scare everybody so I can have my own private bathroom. I don't know who the heck decided to do that, but. You do. Oh, Christ, I'm going to throw up if I'm not just joking. I feel great. Great. Sorry. Sorry about that. All right, moving on. Diary of a Whippy Kid Double Down. Now, in here, Greg makes his own film. And in this book, he gets tied up by his underwear, hide, um, basically dangling from a freaking chandelier. Which was a really good thing to this book. I thought that this book was one of the most unique when it comes to movie making in Diary of a Whippy Kid. I think it's the only one we've seen of that. Now, for me, I thought this was going like the old school way and having no electronics again. But in this one, it's different because he's making up his own movie and stuff. And and in this book, he comes across the darndest things in this book that any other Diary of a Whippy Kid books cannot compare to until book 16. Now... Before we get to number one, we have to get to number two. Wait, no, wait. Yeah, that was number two. The top one of fun, which is old school. We're gonna hit it with the cabin fever. Now, exactly why Diary of a Whippy K Cabin Fever is the least one in fun is because it's still not as good as those two, but it still is pretty good to make it up to fun. 
it was really, 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 and I mean really, really good. I, I kind of like this one more than the other, you know, Christmas one we've gotten. They're, you know, snow type thing. Was utterly one of the best ones we've seen. And it's just the fact of having a creepy doll named, um, Sat wait. Alfredo. Which is a doll that uh, hunts Roderick and Greg and Manny likes it. And Greg overthinks stuff in, in this book about the doll. And he imagines any noise being basically Alfredo knocking and stuff. And someone even had a book theme for it. Had like a book idea called Silas, Silas or not Silas, Alfredo's Revenge. Which I would see. That's probably going to be a Halloween one. But yeah, that would be amazing to see. I absolutely love this. And yeah. Now, the top one is Diary of a Whippy Kid, Big Shot. Big Shot was the best book that I've read of Diary of a Whippy Kid. It made so much sense of having this book last year. I don't know why, but it kind of fit in with my year at school so far. And, it, and but when my mom got me it, I just started reading it right off the bat until I had to go eat a few minutes later. And I was very upset. But at the beginning, there's automatically already funny parts in this book. You're guaranteed to love this book if you're someone like me that loves basketball. And it just shows so many memories of Greg playing, you know, sports back in the day when he actually couldn't win. So it kind of brings more of a good, oh, Greg's a wimpy kid type theme again, or feeling again. And then at the end, that's when he starts to not become a wimp because he wins. And usually he never wins at stuff, but I found that that ending to that book fits so well with the theme and the book itself and i'm so glad i had the chance to read it i'm so glad i'm going to begin the book 17 when it releases in a couple days uh it, it will coming out on october 25th so in a few weeks um when i first get it i'm going to be re i'm going to be reading it and then when i'm first done with it i'm going to review it so I'm gonna make sure if you guys want to not have any spoilers i'll do a spoiler free video i'll try to come up with a way to not spoil anything and then i'll do a spoil one Maybe a couple days after that one. I don't know. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening to today's video. I see you guys next time. Bye.